Hello everyone and welcome to Teach Me in 10, the video series that is brought to you by LabTube, part of the Technology Networks Group. Here we ask scientists to teach us about a scientific research area or a scientific concept in less than 10 minutes. My name is Molly and I'm a science writer for Technology Networks. Today our guest is Dr Ali Konamasene, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. He's going to talk to us about organs on a chip and how they can be used in novel drug discovery and testing. Hello, my name is Ali Karamoseni and I'm a professor and CEO at the Terasaki Institute. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the work that we're doing in the area of organs on a chip. So if you know something about medicine is that drugs are a major part of what medicine is all about. So typically you get sick and you go um, to the doctors and the doctors uh, give you a particular drug to take. Now, have you ever thought about how that drug is actually developed? Um, well, what happens is that these big uh, pharmaceutical companies um, do a whole process of drug development that involves creating a first a huge library of different types of molecules and then testing these different molecules to see which one works as a drug. Now, this is a very complex process. It, it takes about 10 years and billions of dollars to develop a drug. Now, why does, and first of all, how is this process and um, you can see that this process that's now um, is happening even for COVID, it takes a long time for a drug to get approved or for a vaccine to get approved. Uh, what happens is that you first take these different um, compounds and you test them in a tissue culture dish on cells. Then you test them on animals like rodents. And then you put them in a few people uh, called uh, phase one clinical trial and you see whether these compounds are safe. Then you put them on more people and then you put them even on more people. Um, and if all this process happens properly, then you have a drug that could be approved. Now, the challenge here is that a lot of times when a compound gets um, to the later stages of these clinical trials, which is uh, when you already have spent hundreds of millions of dollars, it fails because we cannot predict that it's going to uh, be working or it's going to be uh, safe for people. So it wouldn't be great to be able to understand at the early stages whether something is going to work in people. And this is what the whole field of organs on a chip is about because animal models like rodents don't have the same kind of um, predictiveness as a human um, tissue. So um, we're very different from mice. So we need to be able to um, appreciate these differences and model them. So one of the research areas that we do in our lab is to be able to make models of human tissue in a dish so that we can have predictiveness in the kinds of things that we're interested. So how does this done? So for example, we wanna make a model of a liver tissue. Liver is very important for drugs because a lot of the drugs um, that we um, um, eat wind up getting metabolized in the liver. So being able to see the effect of the liver on the drug is very important and see whether the drug is toxic or not in the liver. So what we can do is that we can actually make a liver models by being able to take cells like stem cells from people and take these stem cells and combine them with different types of materials and different types of approaches to actually be able to make many pieces of liver tissue so that you can test the different chemicals on these liver tissue um, and see whether it's toxic or not. Now, imagine that you wanna make a different tissue like heart or the muscle or bone. You can use the same kind of approach, be able to take stem cells and then grow these cells um, in a dish so that you can actually make these mini tissues and be able to test them. 
And you can even combine these different tissues, just as in our own body, the blood flows through these different tissue types. We can do the same kind of model. We can be able to take a liver tissue and a heart tissue and a bone tissue and other mm -hmm. tissues and then be able to interconnect them. So we understand the complexity of these kinds of interconnections that exist in our own body between how the different tissues interface and interact with each other. So this is an area that I think uh, we and many other people are very excited about because if it all works out the way we're um, aiming to make it work, one day we can have drugs that are much um, faster in their approval. And potentially even we can do this process for our own cells. We can take cells from um, an individual, be able to um, convert those cells to stem cells and be able to make the different types of tissues that are very specific to an individual. And by doing that, you can actually test what drugs work on which individual, whether um, a cancer drug is going to work on a person who's got cancer or a different cancer drug needs to be tested, or whether um, a, a heart um, medication is actually going to be toxic to that individual um, and not toxic to someone else. So these are the kind of things that we can do. And at the Terasaki Institute, one of our main goals is to enable this area called personalized medicine through developing these organs on a chip models and then being able to use them in people and for different applications. A huge thanks to Dr. Ale Kodimasene for joining us here at Teach Me in 10 and for teaching us all about organs on a chip. If you'd like to learn more about Dr. Kodimasene's research, we will include the relevant links in the video description below so that you can check out his work. We will be back next week for another installment of Teach Me in 10. If you can't wait until then, make sure to check out our hub page, which is linked below, where you can find the full library of Teach Me in 10 videos that we have published so far. See you next week.